Watch up all you people douchebags! <laughs> What is up all of you diesel douchebags? Comments Kyle back again to bring you guys a new video. If you guys are new, this is my 1998.5 24 valve truck. Let me guys give you a quick rock, walk around of it. It's nothing too special at all guys, but I've done quite a bit to it in the past two years of ownership. I definitely recommend you guys checking out my channel. In the link in the description, I'll actually leave a build day uh, playlist so you can check out a bunch of videos and a bunch of stuff that I've done to this truck. Pretty clean for the most part, besides the little rust bubble right here, which is pretty good considering this truck is, of course, from New Jersey. So the tailgate, of course, we need to get redone, but that'll get done. This side of the truck is pretty much perfect for the most part, except for a little dent here, and I would say that starting to rust, but that's literally a cheap $40 piece. So that'll all get fixed, and, um, yeah so that's the truck guys if you are new if you aren't new thanks for taking a look at the truck again but anyways guys let's hop back in the truck and i'll talk to you guys about what we're going to do today pajamas in the reflection of the truck and you're damn right i'm in my pajamas because i'm just enjoying my thanksgiving break and i hope you guys have been doing the same thing i'm off of college now until uh tomorrow night well monday i guess you can say and uh it's just a good time all around so Anyways, guys, uh, I had intentions of actually doing the valve lash on this truck. Uh, essentially, just adjusting the valves and I guess the spacing between the valve and like the rocker arm, I guess. Uh, so the engine, engine runs the most efficiently. It doesn't, you know, clack and clatter as much as a diesel and if that makes any sense. If you guys have done a valve adjustment, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about, but... If you haven't, I definitely recommend just taking a YouTube video, looking up a YouTube video of valve adjustment on a Cummins and how it improves your fuel economy, improves the way the truck starts, and just in general, it's good for the engine to do it every like 100,000 miles. So like I said, I had intentions to do that, guys, but then I came across this headlight issue and I said, what's more important, my truck's headla headlights being able to turn on or my truck being able to cold start efficiently? You know, it's, it's kind of a toss-up because they're both very, very important. Um, but I opted to do the, try to fix the headlights because I do a lot of nighttime driving and of course I need headlights. Um, in terms of the truck cold starting, uh, if you guys haven't seen the last three videos about you know how the truck is starting and stuff like that, uh, I definitely recommend you watch this otherwise you're not going to know what I'm talking about. So go do that if you haven't already. But if you did see those videos, you would know that I'm having issues with the truck cold starting. Uh, it's starting right up, but it's starting with quite a bit of white smoke. I've done quite a, you know, quite a bit of things to try to uh, fix that. Um, and it turns out, if I plug the truck in, if I plug the truck in and start it, there's like no smoke at all. Um, so that makes me think that it's just like a grid heater issue or something. Um, because I also have a clip that I'm going to show you now of how it starts when I cycle the key multiple times. So I'll show you that now boom happy about it so far so it's about um 9 30 in the morning give or take um and we are going to start the truck difference here is we are going to be cycling the keys multiple times so when i say this i mean we're going to let the grid heater come on multiple times so here's once And we'll stay on for, you know, 10 seconds, depending on how cold it is outside. And then I'll turn the truck off, of course, after they go off. We'll get the way to start light again. And then we're going to do it another two times. And then we will see if there's white smoke when I start it. There's another time.
And the last time, by the way, guys, this camera is 4K. It's the iPhone 8 Plus uh, 4K at 60 frames. It's pretty much DSLR quality. So that's the four times, guys. And we're going to fire the truck up now. And we're going to see if it smokes. So guys, uh, you clearly see there was still white smoke, but at this cold, at these cold temperatures that we're now having in New Jersey in November, um, well, Pennsylvania, I should say, but the same area, you know, as far as how north we are. Um, but with that being said, guys, uh, so now we know that the grid heater is very weak and sometimes it doesn't even work at all. And that is the reason for the white smoke on starter because of just how cold everything is. So. I'm actually at college, as I've said so many times, and you can't see, but behind this tree, there's actually a spot for me to go ahead and plug my truck in. I don't really think you can see behind the tree, but either way, that'll be really nice because then we won't have to deal with this issue. And then hopefully around the holidays, um, maybe not Thanksgiving, but around Christmas break, I'll be able to replace the grid heater, which is relatively inexpensive, below $100, I believe. I think you can get one for 60 and then you can go ahead and buy the relay online, replacement relays for like 30. So we're talking about uh, cold starts, you know, without any smoke for under $100. So I think that's a good deal. So if you saw those clips, you know that, you know, now the truck doesn't start with quite as much white smoke um, as it did before. And that's because I believe the grid heater is weak. So pretty much around the holidays when I have more money, I'm going to definitely be doing that. Um, but as you saw, I also found a place to plug my truck in at school, which is freaking phenomenal, as long as I get that parking spot, which means I have to get back to school early uh, tomorrow, which is Sunday, of course. Well, yeah, well, no, tomorrow is Saturday. Today is Friday, right? I don't know. What the hell is it? Yeah, so tomorrow is Sunday, and I have to get back early Sunday um, to get that spot to be able to plug my truck in. If not, not a big deal. But uh, yeah, so like I said, valve lash will be done around the holidays among with a ton of other things and a ton of plans that I have for the truck. Um, sorry for rambling a ton. Let's get into this headlight issue. So pretty much guys, this is what we're working with. Um, I replaced the switch in a video about, I'd say a month or two ago, and that didn't fully fix my issue. Um, so essentially, guys, what I just did was we took off, let's see if I can find it in this bag of shit. We took off this old, burnt up, I'll try to get this into focus. We took off this old, burnt off wiring harness plug and we put in this new one. Simple, all it did was, uh, you know, we put some butt connectors. It's all tucked away, so you really can't see it, but the new harness is on there in addition to a new switch. Um, and the issue still is not fixed. So allow me to button all of this up, and then I'll show you guys under the hood of what the, I think the problem is and how we're gonna potentially try to remedy it. Together, as you can see, guys, and let me show you my issue. So, fog lights, headlights. Oh, well, nothing's working now because I disconnected the battery terminal. Okay, I just connected it real quick. Now you can see just the headlight works, the fog light does not. Headlight works, fog light does not. Cab lights do not work. And by the way, I'm sorry for keep calling them fog lights. Parking lights don't work. Roof lights don't work. Which means my rear running lights don't work on the tail lights. This serves as a huge issue because, of course, I can get pulled over for not having any taillights. So we replaced the switch, we replaced the wiring harness, and still nothing. So at this point, uh, the only knowledge that I have to do would be to check the fuses, and we're going to check the fuses. 
So after pulling the fuse, the fuse appeared to be good, but I'm also going to uh, just wait. My dad has a ton of fuses uh, in his truck, so when he gets home, I will be certain to put a new fuse in just to rule out anything fuse related. So we just got back from the auto parts store. We got a new relay for under the hood, um, the trailer relay, and then we got a new fuse for inside the cab, plus we got extra emergency fuses. I'm gonna replace these right now and I will report back with what happens. So I'm running out of daylight, guys. Uh, otherwise, I'd keep recording and stuff like that. But I gotta get the whole truck buttoned up. But once it is buttoned up, I will see you guys. Moment of truth, guys. I'm really hoping for the best here. Let's see if it all works. Oh my God. It works. Hell to the fucking yes, boys. We are back in the business. Look at that. The fog light is working, the roof lights are working, which means... Yes. It is fixed. It is fixed. It is fixed. So pretty much, guys, it's all fixed up. I just have to button everything up. I just find it to be amazing that because of a broken fuse, I was literally on the verge of selling the truck. I mean, I guess you guys can relate. Anytime your truck, something breaks in your truck, it's like, oh, this thing's a piece of shit. I just want to sell it and get something else. But if you fight through the problems, you get through the problems, you get everything fixed. Nothing is better than trying to, to fixing a problem. I know it's super uh, small. All it was was a fuse. But I'm telling you, um, we tried so many different things. And I guess it's a great learning experience for me and you guys watching to, you know, if you have an electrical problem, you know, it's a given though. I know, I'm sure you guys all know this already. Check the fuse first. Check the fuse first. All right, guys, she is all buttoned up and that is all I have for you guys today. It feels really good to be able to fix a problem finally. Um, and it also feels good to finally be fixing the white smoke issue on cold starts. It ended up just being the grid heater, which we're going to replace very soon. In the meantime, we're just gonna plug the truck in at night if it gets really cold. And even if I can't plug the truck in, it's still no big deal because it will start just with a lot of white smoke. Valve lash will be coming very soon. Hopefully around winter break, I'll be able to do that. Reason being that I, you know, reason that I didn't do the valve lash this weekend is because uh, I didn't do enough research on it to, you know, so I don't really know how to do it. Uh, it looks to be pretty easy, but like I said, I just didn't um, do enough research on it. And of course I wanted to fix the headlights overdoing the valve lash. So thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying the video quality. Hope you guys are enjoying this 4K camera and this freaking nice sunset behind me in New Jersey. Hope you guys have a great one. Hope you had a great Thanksgiving. Subscribe if you haven't already. Cummins Kyle out. Peace. I'm